have Mr. Neeraj Ruparel, Head of Mobile and Emerging Tech Group M, India, who's here, who's going to speak to you shortly. So can we have Neeraj here? Very welcome. Hello, hello. Khyati, you almost forgot me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. Hi, no problems. Hi, hi, Thomas. How are you doing? Very good. Sorry about you. you. So, I think yesterday we had this chat and I, I went back and I was talking to my team. So at WPP India, we've got a bunch of folks who are thinking uh, beyond time, I would say, like the team for the future, we call it. So they are the bunch of guys who focus on innovation. So I kind of went to them and I said, I'm going to have a chat with uh, Thomas tomorrow. And within 10 minutes, I've got about 20 questions that this is what you should be asking Thomas. And I kind of relate the topic which you're going to be talking about. And, and the today's session, which you did, was a complete eye opener. I ended up making a lot of notes as well. And Khyati almost forgot me. Uh, so I'm right here. Uh, I've got these bunch of questions. Uh, just to begin with, uh, I have partially gone through the book which you've written, which is The 12 Powers of Marketing Leaders, right? I wanted to know, like, what was the thought behind it? Because there was some massive research which has gone behind creating that book. And like bunch of leaders across the globe, you must have spoken to and created this robust book, which is like a ready reckoner for any marketer to kind of access and learn from it. So what was the thought behind it? Um, thanks, Raj. That's a great question. Um, you see, when I was six, I wanted to become an advertising guy. I wanted to, I wanted to make ads. That was my dream. And my parents said, that's a crazy idea. You know, ads is not a good business. It's not ethical. You, know, you should do something proper. So anyway, I ignored that, became a marketer. And when I was a marketing director and led the Kleenex business, Kleenex household business in Europe, I had I was sick and tired. I said, you know, I'm going to quit because the finance people are seem to be making the decisions and operations. You know, I'm out. So I became a McKinsey partner and to tell CEOs how marketing works. And in fact, that was the time when I then started leading mobile marketing. Uh, which was my area of specialty. And what's interesting, when you see the marketers and the non-marketers in the boardroom, because as a partner of McKinsey, you sit there, you know, you see everybody. And you see that some people outside marketing seem to be quite smart when it comes to getting their way, you know, getting the budgets. And I felt, wow, you know, why don't we bring this to marketers? Because marketing is amazing. I mean, it's, it's the voice of the customers. We got to help. You know, we got to bring these ideas. And that's why I decided, look, you know, the best thing I can do is, is quit and start to research and try and figure out what it takes for marketers to have that more influence and impact. So I did that. And because there was very little research, in fact, there is still very little research about the success of marketers, you know, there's lots of branding and stuff. And I decided, okay, let's do some proper research. So a team that was linked in with the, uh, some s associations in the US and we had indeed did that massive research and then we felt a book is a way to getting the word out. So um, I think what, what, I'm, what I'm telling you here, I think there is a desire to make marketers more successful uh, that was born when I was six. Oh, wow, that, that's awesome. Now, what happens in the Indian market? We keep visiting a lot of our clients with uh, tons of innovative ideas. I think we were catching up on uh, mixed reality and immersive technologies and conversational AI and tons and tons of stuff on ideation. And more often than not, we feel that uh, marketers are unable to convince the people internally. So what's your sense on that? Why is that happening? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great, great you question. Know, we, and I think it's it comes to the crux of it right because marketing and people in marketing i've met have so many fantastic ideas and like like on your end right i mean i'm sure you have really innovative ideas and many times you say damn it you know why doesn't the company do it and then someone else does it and you can tell your client look guys you know you're again three years behind i told you the problem is that um or the challenge we have is that a lot of people in marketing see themselves as marketers but not as business leaders. And I wish we could switch this because if you are a, believing only you are as a marketer, you will stay in your little silo. You will talk the marketing language. You will, you will work on marketing programs and you kind of like get busy to just tell other people what you think is right. And then they keep ignoring you while the marketers who have a more of a business mindset are the ones that have a, the better type of conversations. 
for example, if you think, look, you know, I'm not in charge of marketing, I'm in charge of growing the business by 10% every year, right? That's a very different mindset. And then I said, look, you know, Neeraj came to me with this wonderful idea that they've developed at Groupcom. And look, guys, you know, here's not just why it's great for marketing, but here it's great for the business. And so you get a wider conversation going. And I think that is that ultimately is the is the aim uh, that we need to get to that marketers take a broader responsibility, personal responsibility for the business, and also therefore are able to explain ideas that you bring to them or your colleagues bring to them in a business context. And that's where it sometimes breaks down. And if we can fix that, I think marketers will be more influential and you will have more fun as well because you, more of your ideas will see the light of the day. Absolutely. We are oozing with ideas. We need that support uh, for it to actually close and see the light of the day. You you spoke a lot about being brave. So what's what's kind of stopping the marketers? Why aren't they brave? Why aren't they taking that? Here's a, here's a fundamental challenge, right? Firms do not reward people for being brave. Think about it. Firms reward people for being successful. Yeah. And 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 that's and then sometimes people say, yeah, but I want my boss to to support all my brave ideas. What you're really saying is, you know, let me try this. If it succeeds, I get the credit. If not, you get the blame. No, yeah. people are not rewarded for bravery and will never be. People are rewarded for success. So the point is, first off, we need to. We need to get away from this idea that we need to create companies that will every will tell everybody to take big risks. It's not how it works. I think what we need to get to is that people realize that I can take risks. I can take calculated risks. And if I don't, my business will be less successful. So it's almost an obligation to take risks. And I can't wait for my boss to tell, to tell me. So we need more people to get out of this mindset that just because success is rewarded and risk isn't, I don't take risks. Yeah, so Absolutely. it's the calculated risk. And I'm sure many ideas that you produce there, Groupcom, um, could accelerate a business significantly. But it will never be a success factor, a case when the marketers aren't saying, OK, even if my boss isn't sure, right, I'm going to take that risk. And if it doesn't work, OK, I have a problem, but that's part of the game. Yeah. That's why you have that's, to pick your battles. Yeah, yeah. That, that's exactly, I think we fail more than we succeed when it comes to innovations on my, that's my side of the story. But when that's I succeed, right. I end up creating global headlines, you know, like some of my campaigns has won like all possible awards last year. So failure is, is part yeah. of it, it's part of the game. Now, yeah. another question was, how can marketers become more innovative? <laughs> this is from uh, one of my colleagues at Ogilvy. I think it's a, it's a great question. Um, it comes back to the question of what is your job? And the moment you think my job is to do marketing and here's my job description and here are the five things I'm going to do every single day and I'm going to do my Facebook campaigns, I'm going to do this and that. It's very hard to be innovative because your job description already tells you what to do. Why do you need to innovate? I think this, the picture changes if you, as a marketer, get you know, sit back on your sofa, have a drink, the tea for that matter, and say, if this was my firm, what would I do? Or if I was a customer of this firm, what would I really want? And we need to ask these future forward questions way more. And we're not doing that today. And a second reason is that a lot of people spend a lot of time inside the company. Most of the emails that people create are inside the firm. Why don't you go out as a marketer? You have to be out and about. If you work as a marketer in mobile, you have to know what the trends are. You have to, you have to go to some of the big events like this one today. You have to see what, what people are saying, what the trends are. Work with people like you, uh, with other external people who give perspectives. I think too many people are cooking their own little soup inside the firm and get busy pleasing everybody around. So that outward looking mindset is a long term for saying, don't just look at home. In mobile is crucial because mobile is still, you know, what is the new innovation in mobile? I'm, I'm asking you. I mean, lots of people are talking about innovation in mobile. I mean, yes, we had two, two, 2G 
3G and 4G and uh, 5G, right? But, you know, largely people buy a SIM card and make phone calls and then surf the web. Now, that's, of course, great, but we could innovate so much more in the marketing space. We could understand customers so much more, but we have to get out of our job description and ask ourselves, what is our real job? And that, to me, oh. is growing the business, which means it got to have innovation. Absolutely. So I've been doing uh, mobile marketing for a decade now. So I think initially we, we started with SMS and voice-based marketing, predominantly addressing the rural India. Mm -hmm. And then we built a lot of solutions over the years, basis location, fancy banners, rich media creatives and stuff like that. Uh, but I still feel there's a lot of growth to be had in this particular space. So what's your advice to the marketers? So first off, um, as a marketer, you know, I asked earlier, what is your job? Your job is growth. So if if your business isn't growing fast, then you're already not doing your job well. I mean, that's a starting point. Yeah. So yeah. now, of course, if the business is growing great, you know, why innovate? What's the point? Right. I mean, you know, you're not you don't innovate just because of a fund. But typically firms hit growth hit curves where you know growth isn't as fast. And that is where marketing comes in. Peter Drucker said, you know, the business only has two main functions. It's innovation right? <laughs> and marketing. And it is true. Now, if marketers don't innovate, who else will? You know, the firm, the firm is looking to marketers, but it comes to the same point. If marketers are just doing what's in a job description, there will be no innovation. So I think it's your job. And ask yourself, and that's the question I would leave. And here's another way of looking at it. If you are in marketing and you work in a firm, I would ask myself, what's the legacy that I want to leave? When I get fired here one day, what will people remember? They will not remember that I answer to all emails on time. They will not remember that I delivered a few projects on time. They will remember the things that I changed that left a mark on consumers. And that is typically an innovative idea. Absolutely. Totally zoned, uh, Thomas. Uh, as we speak, I want to make notes of all this and apply it to my daily lives, perhaps and try and crack some new innovations. Let's just hear it from the audience in case they have any additional questions. Uh, Khyati, Priyanka, if they have any additional questions, maybe we can take that up now. Oh, we can't hear you, Khyati, you're on mute. Right. Back. Yes, I'm back. And uh, we have a couple of questions. But firstly, I wanted to do a round with uh, you, Neeraj, and Thomas. Just quickly asking you that how every age that we've seen whether it's been a stone age the age of internet and now we're talking about the screen age how long do you think this is going to go on is this for eternity or is does this have like a time period for it as well according to you thomas you want to go for it what's the stream age so i am old school <laughs> <laughs> are we in a stream age now is that is that what we call it <laughs> screen age. We are like using too many screens, right? Like we're talking about the screen age. Right. Screen, yeah. 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 Well, I'll tell you about my personal view. I hope the current age of sitting in front of screens every single day and not going out is hopefully going to end really fast. And you know what? Yeah. Then there will be the connection age, hopefully, again, because that's what we're in. I think we are in a, ultimately, look, we are in a relationship. I mean, everybody has different ages. I believe from a marketing perspective, we've moved from the selling age to the relationship age. Because because of technology, right? And you know that, of course, you're the much more the experts. Uh, we can now create relationships with people at scale, time and time and again. That to me is a really, and that's a long. And I, I think we still have 50, 80 years of getting this right because we currently don't. If you're very honest, how many stupid emails are you getting where people get your name wrong, where it's an offer that you don't care about at all, where it's like a, you, I get these LinkedIn invites by saying. Aren't you also like blah, blah, and they have no clue who I am. So there is so much to be done in a relationship age. So my view is we're going to be, you know, most of people before we die will be busy in a relationship age. Right. That's wonderfully said. Neeraj? That's, that's, that's really wonderful. Uh, I would say the screen age is here to stay. However, a lot of uh, technology interventions you would see in uh, coming years wherein XR would play an important role, which is immersive technology. So you're going to be actually machines and humans would come together and relay an experience together, yeah. right? You can have virtual concerts going in there. You'll be running a lot of these virtual presentations, which are right now happening on a Q&A fashion, but it will be machines and humans coming together 
to relay that kind of experiences. So XR is what I believe in. Voice is something which I live on completely. So you're you're going to be talking to more and more devices in times to come. And Alexa and Google are already driving the wave in a big way. So this is going to be all screenless uh, experience. We are talking to any hardware and you get a response back. That's something which the future is moving towards. And voice comes pretty naturally to us. So it's going to be the voice age in times to come. Voice That's how I think. Wow. <laughs> so I think uh, I'm sure the 4M team is listening and they're going to be coming up with the new uh, IP, which is going to be about voice things, right? This is amazing. Thank you, Thomas, for uh, taking out the time and being here. I'm sorry, Neeraj, on the confusion. But All right, thank perfectly fine. Thank you so good. much. Uh, have a great evening, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Greg. So All the best for your conference. All the best. Thank, thank you. you very much. Bye bye.